Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this another Atlantic Hurricane Season countdown video. And so we are currently 66 days away from the official start of the 2022 Atlantic Hurricane Season. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what's currently taking place across the Atlantic region, but we're really going to be focusing on the Caribbean. We're going to see what's going to be expected as we head throughout this week. And we're also going to be taking a look at that El Nino Southern Oscillation. So we are in El Nino, so we're going to be taking a look at what is currently happening with it. And so before I go into details, Okay, and so currently we are taking a look at infrared satellite and we're seeing here that we have some weather systems across the Atlantic and we do have cold front that is extended uh, down into sections of the Caribbean. So right at the tail end of that front is really dissipating in the Caribbean region and we do see some spots of some clouds which might bring some straight showers along with them. So nothing very major right now, although uh, some of this moisture is going to be lingering in some areas uh, probably for the next day or so and let's go ahead and take a look at what the gfs is showing in terms of all that moisture and then up next we'll take a look at the total precipitation that is going to be expected between now and next sunday and so here on this map we are seeing all these green shades and this is really uh, indicating moisture and so uh this is for tomorrow on the 28th of the month on Monday and we're seeing that uh, most of that moisture from that cold front is really going to be dissipating but we do have some lingering in the vicinity of Central America and some sections of the Greater Antilles such as Hispaniola. And so as we head to Tuesday we see that we have quite a bit of moisture that is noted in sections of Central America and also sections of Eastern Jamaica as well as Hispaniola. But as we head to Friday on the 1st of April April, we see that we have some of this moisture really dissipating and we just have some that is making its way in coming in from the Atlantic uh, as what usually happens and so nothing very major is going to be happening but that uh, consistent rainfall in sections of Central America uh, could be quite significant and so we're going to be taking a look now at the total accumulated precipitation that is going to be expected between now and next Sunday and we have the different colors here that indicate different amounts of rainfall so all of the green shades they indicate under an inch of rainfall along with that very dark blue shade Shade, but as we head to a lighter blue that is one to near two inches of rainfall and lilac indicates about two inches of rainfall and so this is between now and this coming wednesday so this is all the precipitation that is expected across the region from now until wednesday so it's not just for one day and so we are seeing that uh, we have quite a bit of rainfall that is expected uh, along sections of Central America. Some areas expected to uh, experience up to two inches of rainfall and so that is also the case for some sections of Northern uh, Dominican Republic area right there but uh, surrounding areas might have less rainfall maybe an inch less rainfall than that and as we take a look at between now and next Sunday we see that quite a bit of rainfall is expected especially in the vicinity of the south caribbean so all of those regions um, might be having some consistent rainfall from all the moisture that is going to be abundant in that area throughout this week guys so please be mindful of that uh, if you are in these areas and so the euro model goes out only until the 30th of March which is on Wednesday and it is agreeing with something a little bit similar to what the GFS is showing that some sections of Central America are going to be experiencing a more uh, rainfall than other areas such as uh, Belize, uh, maybe going down to Honduras as well, Costa Rica and Panama. So now let's go ahead and really take a look at all the moisture that is currently present in the atmosphere and so we have the different colors on this map indicating uh, whether we have dry conditions or moist conditions and so uh, we're seeing that in the vicinity of the Caribbean for most of the region it is really uh, a lot of moisture that is present uh, thanks to that cold front that is there but behind that front we have all of that dry air and we also have some cross sections of the eastern Caribbean as well so that is what is currently taking place 
at this time. And then next, let's go ahead and take a look at sea surface temperature. So are we really seeing much of a change in terms of the sea surface temperatures? And so we're seeing that things are still warming up slowly. So we're not going to see a very rapid increase uh, in the amount of heat content that is present. But as we progress closer and closer to the official start of the hurricane season and further into the summer months as a whole, we will see a significant increase, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, which is usually a hot spot for us to see some significant intensification of tropical cyclones, especially in the months of uh, August and September. And those are also the peak months for the hurricane season. That's when we see the most activity taking place and storms always trod in that duration. And when we have above normal uh, temperatures, that is when things get really intense. And for the past years, we have seen some storms that rapidly intensified in the Gulf of Mexico. So last year, we saw Ida, we saw Grace that rapidly intensified in the Gulf of Mexico. And in 2020, we saw Laura that rapidly intensified as well it almost became a category 5 so both Ida and Laura they almost reached that cat 5 mark but they didn't and so now let's go ahead and take a look at that El Nino region right there so it's called the and so it stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation and now let's go ahead and take a look at what it's doing so uh, it is that highlighted blue area we see that you're extended from uh, South America going all the way out into portions of the Central Pacific and so uh, this is what is uh, indicative of a La Nina because these blues they indicate lower than normal or below normal sea surface temperatures and so that is when we know that a La Nina is present once it is a minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius or lower we are really in a La Nina and so looking at this Nino 3.4 index. So this is really a graph to show how the area is really behaving in terms of the temperature. And we're seeing that there has been a lot of fluctuations with this and this is really going to be continuing. So the current value is minus 0 0.7 uh, degrees Celsius below normal. And so this means that we're still in a La Nina. So as I said, we will continue to see these fluctuations as time goes by. But for the most part, the temperature is remaining cooler than that minus 0.5 degrees Celsius below normal. And as you're going to be heading into the latter part of this year, we might be going into a neutral and so, but we really have to wait and see what the eventuality is going to be because as of right now, there are no predictions to really tell you what is going to be happening exactly. So we have to wait until we are closer and we're going to be seeing the different changes and drawing the various conclusions from what is going to be happening. But for the most part, things do not look to be trodden in the direction where we could see a below average hurricane season. So there is just a 10% chance of that happening. So 90% chance of a senior normal or above normal conditions. So that is what is on the horizon as of right now. And as I said, we got to wait and see what the eventuality is going to be. And so guys, that is really it for this update video. And so if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up. And you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and soon as I can. And just remember to always be with wise.